In today's video, we're going to peel back the curtain on some of the cunning techniques that hackers employ to hide malware. We'll explore three distinct ways hackers can conceal malware aiming to infiltrate and exploit their targets. Remember, knowledge is power, and in the digital age, staying informed is our best defense. So let's jump into it. The first method we're going to be looking at of using is the right-to-left override character. A hacker may use this invisible character to spoof file extensions as part of a phishing or malware attack. When used in a file name, it reverses the direction of the text that comes after it. You can find it by opening up the character map, turning on advanced view, going to Unicode 202E. From here, you just select the character and copy it and it's stored in your clipboard. Now let me show you how to use it. We're gonna start out with three files, our PowerShell payload, our inconspicuous icon, and our dummy Word document. I'm gonna be using PowerShell to EXE compiler for this. We just provide our payload as the input file, our inconspicuous icon, as you guessed it, the icon file. Now for our output file, we're gonna name it passcod.exe. Let's go ahead and run that. And this is where the right to left over right character does its magic. You can now see the exe that it generated. We're gonna rename this file. You'll wanna go right before the cod and paste in the right to left over right character. You'll notice that it appears the file extension has changed, but it didn't, just the name. Now you'd wanna be a little more creative in a real world situation. I would use something like this. It's a little more enticing and I try to obfuscate the exe characters by adding random ones before it and try to pass it off as like some sort of token. You'll notice when I run this, it will open our dummy word document to appear legit, but it also opens the calculator in the background. Just from this brief demo, I'm sure you can imagine the devious capabilities of this. A lot of the current antiviruses will detect this, but of course there's always a way around it. The next method we're gonna be looking at is a form of steganography that is just mind blowing. This is a project on GitHub that I found called Invoke PS Image. It's designed to hide a PowerShell script within an image file and then create a one-liner that can execute the hidden script when desired but not how you would imagine. This script hides your payload in the actual pixels of the image itself. The syntax is easy enough. Provide the script you want injected into the image. Provide the name of the output file. It has to be a PNG. And finally, provide the path to the image that you want to modify. If you do not provide an image, it will generate one for you. This is a before and after of what the image looks like after the payload has been injected. You can see it is a little grainy, but other than that, it's almost hard to tell. It just seems slightly depreciated. But how does it work? Essentially, every color on a computer can be represented as a combination of three primary colors, red, green, and blue. In a computer, these colors are represented as numbers, usually between zero and 255. The script we're looking at uses a trick where it slightly changes the color of pixels in an image, these changes are so minor that to a human eye, the image looks the same. However, the computer can tell the difference and uses those changes to store data. That's the basic idea. Each character in the script is converted to a number, which is then used to subtly alter the colors of the pixels in the image. Because a PNG is a lossless format, meaning the pixels are never altered, this means after you modify one of these images, you can actually upload it almost anywhere online and save it on another computer and the payload would still be intact. The final method that we're gonna be going over is using polyglot files. For this one, I'll be referencing David Buchanan's GitHub repo. A polyglot file is a file that is valid in more than one file format. For example, a file could both be a valid PNG image and zip file. So this image, for example, I can open it like normal, but I can also change the extension to .zip and it will indeed turn into a zip archive. The idea is that the file can be opened with different programs to perform different functions, and that's where the manipulation of hex data comes in. Every file is stored in binary form in a computer, but binary data is often represented as hexadecimal or hex data for humans to read because it's more concise. When creating a polyglot file, the creator needs to understand the structure of both file types they are working with, down to the level of hex data. They have to make sure the file meets the requirements of both formats, 
which means understanding the hexadecimal values that signify important parts of each file type. For instance, every PNG file starts with an 8-bit signature in hexadecimal. A polyglot PNG zip file would need to include these values in the right places to be recognized as a valid PNG. Meanwhile, it would also need to contain the right syntax to be recognized as a valid zip file. There are various tricks that can be used to make a file valid in two formats at once. For instance, some file formats ignore parts of the file they don't understand. So data for that second format can be hidden in those parts. In other cases, the same piece of data may be interpreted differently by different programs. Overall, creating a polyglot file involves a lot of careful manipulation of hex data to satisfy the requirements of multiple file formats at once. It's a complex task that requires a deep understanding of how different file formats work at the binary level. So how can you make your own? It's actually kind of funny. You can go to his GitHub page and save the image shown, go to your downloads, change that file extension to a .zip, now go inside of that folder and you will find everything that you need. This particular script is using Python though, so you need to have that installed to do this. Though I am working on a pure PowerShell version so you don't have to. Let's move the pack.py file to the desktop and now open PowerShell. Make sure you are on the desktop in your terminal and enter the following command modified with your files of course. Again, that is the image you want to convert Next is the zip that you want to merge with the PNG, and finally, the name for the created polyglot file. Once you run this, you'll have your own generated polyglot file to play with. Imagine all the ways you could hide an executable or whatever else. If you are interested in further educating yourself, I have a significantly more in-depth write-up linked in the description as well. With the content I make, YouTube will never monetize me. If you so choose to support my work, I will be forever appreciative, and the links are in the description below. You can be a GitHub or Discord sponsor, or even just leave a one-time tip if you so please. I am Jacoby. My crime is that of curiosity. And yeah, curiosity killed the cat, but satisfaction brought him back. Till next time.